And what I want to do with you, precisely what Ilona said, it's a very personal account of uh, four items I want to address quickly. Uh, one is uh, to say what is, in my perspective, actually the job of a leader in health. And I, unfortunately, uh, we hadn't had the discussion before. Uh, one could also say a leader in health and well-being. Uh, and the second is, uh, how do, what do you do, need to do to be a good health leader? What are the circumstances? Talk a little bit about uh, leadership and then finally, uh, because that was uh, a request, uh, where do I see uh, the key challenges for the future? Uh, Bill Clinton said to uh, Obama before he became president, and what is the key driver? Where is the key factor? And he said, it's economy stupid. That's not what I believe is uh, your job. It's this one. It's the future stupid. I mean, leading means shaping the future. And that's not so evident at all, but uh, we are actually talking about here we are, we know what works well, and we are, we are paid to create the future. So the sentence here, and I will not go through with so many things, of Peter Drucker, uh, uh, you cannot predict the future, but you can create it, is not true for you. At least 50% is not true for you. Uh, you, as we all, cannot predict the future, but we are paid, we are mandated to create this future. And uh, that is actually quite a tricky thing. And we, yesterday we had a talk about uh, the UK system. In quite a number of countries, it's easier. You get the mandate, actually, how the future should look like. Uh, meaning uh, that you have your four-year program of the government who says, in health, we want to achieve this and that. In other countries, and very often even at your workplace, it's not so clear what is actually the vision, what's the future. Uh, most of the time we know what is the reality, but we don't know where should we actually go. And it's also a matter of, do I plan the future I'm asked to do uh, in my time, in my job? Uh, or do I vision something which is very far away or even very difficult? Let's say I decide I see my job as contributing to reduce climate change and the impact on health. That's certainly not something that you can do easily, uh, but uh, then you reduce it to something that you probably try to achieve. And I think uh, it's pretty important always to think about this question, how do I get a good vision of the future? What we all do and all governments do is we then set up an expert committee, and the expert committee will tell you where we are and what is the future. And uh, as a matter of fact, that can be uh, a first step of an error. Uh, because, and I show you this one here, everybody knows uh, this graph. It is the graph of the uh, increase of healthcare costs in uh, the uh, in the U.S. at the 200.5% above the GBT, GDP is uh, the U.S. and the 2% are the European countries or the OECD countries. And it doesn't even matter where, what country it is. It's a kind of interesting. But what you can see there, it's pretty linear over the years. And now if you take um, some experts together, what will they do? They will just say it will continue to be linear. 
That's even in Switzerland, uh, our Ministry of Finance made a, a, a study and said, uh, we will be at uh, the level of, two of the US in 70, uh, at 70.1% uh, GDP in uh, 2060. So not too much to worry right now, because it takes a long time we are where the US is. But, you know, what I want to say is one way to look in the future is to think it's just a linear continuation of the presence. Can also be exponential, whatever. But there is a clear line uh, between today and tomorrow. And we all know, and that's the reason why the leadership program here is uh, uh, called talking about complex systems. Complex systems are something completely different. And actually, uh, if you start changing something in a complex system, uh, you're not sure where you're going to end. And so that's a, a pretty challenging thing. How can I be a leader in a complex system? Experts actually don't help you anything. Uh, except if they are expert in changing complex systems. And you all know and will learn that uh, uh, you will m need to make pilots, and from the pilots eventually then you can expand it to a larger scale, etc. All of that, of course, takes a long time. And so if you uh, need to be faster to create the future uh, or to have an answer, it's actually uh, something we did in Switzerland a couple of times, and it works quite well, is you take people, uh, senior people who have a long career in a given field, and you ask them, what is your estimate what will be happening? And it's an interesting thing that by pattern recognizing, they uh, intuitively will tell you Eventually, we, you might go in that and that direction. So anyway, what I want to say is um, creating the future and thinking about the future is a tricky thing, but you're paid to do it. And reality, again, is that most of your projects undertaking to create another future will be a failure. Uh, and uh, uh, failure is more frequent than success. And so uh, at Harvard, uh, uh, Mark Roberts and others were looking into uh, something like 100 pro uh, pro uh, processes of reforms and looked into why did they fail and what is behind these failures. And they uh, came up with a pretty simple um, scheme that you really need to master actually three processes. You need a convincing scientific evidence. We'll say something about that in a minute. You need to understand and master the political process. And finally, you need uh, to uh, respect changes in social values. Let's start with the first one. Uh, and we can actually go back to uh, this uh, question of uh, cost increases. Um, every country, Switzerland included, Stefan, we are trying now to bend the curve, to say, let's assume it's actually linear. And we cannot afford to have these 2% above. Then you would uh, say, we need scientific evidence. What is really working to get the bending of the curve? Because, uh, as you can imagine, uh, all the countries on this planet almost, or all the OECD countries, have tried already. What's the uh, result? None, none has, not one single has had a succeed. All have failed. I just came, uh, come back from a conference in the U.S. Uh, where all the health economists were sitting together and the Blunt answer is, we have no convincing science, scientific evidence so far what will help uh, bending the curve. It's just trial. 
Everybody says maybe we work on prices, others say we work on volumes. So, and that's in many of the projects and uh, things you will try to do, uh, you don't have the scientific uh, evidence. In our case, it was, and I would advise you to try to do that too. In our case, it was very helpful to have substantial research money so that uh, we were able actually in some of the areas we tried to make innovation to have enough money to create in parallel the scientific evidence in order to then convince, and that's the author, uh, next step, the, mass, uh, the political world, it's reasonable what we're doing. And mastering the political process I must say, nine out of 10 health specialists are very poor in it. They don't understand what the political processes are, starting with the uh, question that there are normally four years of legislation, that you really, and we are right now in Switzerland there, uh, if you're in the year before the election, of a new parliament, you can't do anything because uh, everybody is just doing party politics. Uh, the window of opportunity is actually right at the beginning of the neck, uh, early uh, legislation. Uh, you need to figure out who is actually in charge of uh, deciding on what you're trying to do. Is it the government? Is it the parliament? Is it a joint? Uh, uh, venture of the parliament uh, cantons in Switzerland, etc. So you need to figure out what is the political process you need to uh, design in order to bring uh, your uh, thing through. And the last thing is quite often uh, it's interesting to work on the values. Uh, I give you two examples. In Switzerland we were pretty bad because of a crisis in illicit drug policy. And as in many countries, we just try to put people in jail and uh, say, uh, with repression, we can do it. And only by turning around the narrative and saying, drug users are not criminals. Drug users are uh, sick people, are people who need our help suddenly we were able to change the value in the society and push that further. And that helped us then getting um, the, uh, the politics further. So it's still a valid uh, book to read, to look into and think of all the three uh, levels you have to work on. Uh, it's not enough to have a good scientific idea on what to do, but you really need to understand where in the political process are we, what are the political parties who would uh, support that. In most countries, and that's the difficulty, in most of your projects, you would uh, g easily get the support of the left wing. Uh, you would left to the center, and the more you go to the right, in most countries, uh, you would see that there is an opposition to uh, make further steps forward in to, uh, into um, reforms of healthcare. So if you want to get further in your discussions, you probably need to build bridges to the middle and to the right wing uh, part in the parliament or in the society, which is not trivial, but uh, obviously is something you need to work on. Leadership, um, second point, this is probably not where you want to do a piece about you want to change that um, and somehow align uh, people on your, uh, on your idea, what needs to be changed for the future. In most countries, actually, we, you don't need to uh, convince 100%. It's enough to have 
51% of the government. It's enough to have 51% in the parliament. It's enough to have 51% um, in Switzerland in voting. Uh, so here again, it's worth thinking of how, where do I stand with my project? And how can I actually convince the other two or three I need in order to get uh, the project three, through? And that is a lot of communication. It's also accepting your role as a leader. And if I would ask you, what is a leader? Then I would say a leader is someone who is interacting with other people. And the group decided to accept that you have a special role in it, leading the group to something new and uh, following you, uh, of course, in some kind of uh, process you have to decide on. But you have the power and you're asked to find consensus with the other people how to go further on. When I started in the Federal Office of Public Health, I had actually no job description. I just had a, <laughs> a mandate. And the mandate was to run or improve as much uh, as uh, it was a national uh, uh, responsibility, the health system, uh, with all the different parts. I only figured out uh, later that I had actually two additional jobs. One is to represent Switzerland uh, and health, when it comes to health, internationally. And I don't represent Switzerland uh, only from the health side, but I represent Switzerland. So I had to defend also all what is intellectual property rights. I had to defend also all which are the economic interests of Switzerland. And suddenly you then see, gee, that's pretty difficult to be a leader with all the other interests on the table to align them, and it took us a long time uh, to find a process. How do we actually find a consensus to lead through uh, this in order to have a Swiss position? I had then a third job, which is probably, when it comes to changing the health, the most important one, that is advocacy uh, for health in other departments, other ministries. Um, and to say you have an important role to play when it comes to health in education, etc. You know all of that. If I look back, I think uh, probably I've uh, done a lot and spent a lot of time in the first task running the system, health system. I spent more and more time when it comes to international activities, I've spent way too little time and was way too uh, least successful when it comes to this uh, work on determinants of health. But think of these things when you're um, taking up a job or working on a job, what are actually the components are there other parts where you could, for instance, be, uh, have a role in advocacy for health, uh, working on determinants, even if you're uh, just uh, invited to, or uh, your core mandate is actually uh, running a, a given part of the system? Let me go a next step, which I think is a tricky one. This comes from the American uh, Medical Association and talks about health literacy and patient safety. Um, and we have been dis discussing that uh, with, um, in other settings. One of the difficulties, and I see it in this room too, is that explaining facts and changes in health to other people is very difficult. And most of the time you ran into being a technical 
uh, in a technical way to explain it. And uh, as a matter of fact, writing or talking uh, uh, at the sixth grade or to someone who has 12 or 14 years is probably the right level. And that doesn't mean that uh, you consider your minister to be a stupid. But as I said this morning, uh, it actually helps he or she doesn't need to read the text three times because he doesn't understand it, because it's easy to read. Plus, he can actually take your words and explain it to someone else, uh, be it the ministers, the others, or be it even the media. And so uh, most of the time, part of your job is to find the right wording in um, uh, communicating as a leader. Well, because otherwise, uh, what happens is what happens here. Uh, you uh, say something, and it goes through several steps. And at the, at the end, you end up with something uh, which is not uh, what you wanted to say. Let me end with uh, one thing we were discussing yesterday, too, on this leadership issue. Uh, that is um, the question of values. As a leader, you have and you have to transfer these values. So normally, uh, in uh, health, probably it is solidarity, not leaving someone behind. It can also be uh, security. Health should be a safe place for families, for those uh, working in it. It can be. Uh, that you're more into sustainability, that you say, um, I want to make changes that for the next generation, the world and the health world is at least as good as this. And so you need to think about the values and how do you build in the values in the way you communicate because as a health leader, you're not only there to give technical answers, but to help shaping the values of a whole society. Let me give another interesting book. David Gurgen was looking into particularly American leaders and what does it take to be a good leader and where do leaders actually fail? And uh, he was looking into a couple of American pro uh, presidents, as you may know, and he came up with these three elements. He said, you need to be good in creating visions. You need to have some knowledges. You need to know how the political system works, and you need to have a character. And I see there is a, a spelling error. Um, and that's... And if you look at where people fail as leaders, it's actually mostly in the field of character. Uh, so, uh, and that's one of the points you will feel uh, when being in a long time uh, leading position, you have to invest in yourself and you have to invest in your family because the, the risk of a burnout is high and that you after a couple of years just do a job but uh, you're not happy and satisfied anymore so uh, to be a good leader uh, means also try to lead yourself uh, and motivate yourself and think of a work life balance which is uh, kind of uh, li livable key challenges I will be pretty short in that. Uh, I could say, I mean, we all know and can have a consensus on what are the key challenges in our countries. It's demography, it is uh, uh, chronic diseases, it's multimorbidity on the side of the population, it's uh, cost on the health system side, uh, it's a digital revolution which is coming, etc. Uh, so all of this, uh, you know, and I will not tell you which one I think is the most important one. One challenge, and I took this picture here, is in all our countries, 
we have one phenomenon that the health system is so stable that it is almost impossible to reform it. And it is a kind of an interesting phenomenon. Why has it become such a strong, stable element that you're hardly able to move on? In Switzerland, I think, uh, and in different countries, it may be a little bit uh, different. One, it relate, it's related to power and actually investments. In Switzerland, we have overinvested in the health system. Um, we are just now building uh, new hospitals for 20 billion Swiss francs. Um, we will not use them, uh, but at the end of the day, someone has to close down and lose all that money. So there is a loss of uh, money involved in changing and a loss of power, uh, which is uh, uh, part of the challenge that you don't get further on. The other one is, at least in Switzerland, we invested so much in comfort that even the population is not really interested in changing too much. And the third one, and we uh, alluded to it, is complexity, uh, which is, makes it very difficult to change. So uh, what are the key challenges um, are pretty much the same in most countries. And what I would invite you to do is don't work on all of them, but try to say, here I am, and I'm here the next five years, and I choose one or two priorities, and I work on these priorities. There will be other people who will work on something else. I, for instance, and very early in my career said, and Ilona uh, mentioned it, I want to change the tobacco policy in Switzerland. And uh, what we actually did in that respect is we said we need to uh, bring tobacco on the political agenda up, 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 because uh, tobacco industry do actually the, the, the opposite. They try to push it down. And I said, let's try it to bring it up. An easy way to do that is to create Crontoro versus to, to, to attack the to tobacco industry, to attack, etc. what we did. And then suddenly it got up. And the third thing uh, we did is actually to uh, create public figures who speak for a reasonable tobacco control. And we decided I am doing that. And uh, so uh, you can actually choose a couple of things you want to do. Don't try to do everything, but prioritize. And if you do that, then I think you can be successful. So the right decision, the right choice, and do less is probably more. And Ilona will be happy. I end up with this here. Um, if you can, and I would invite you, choose a field. Try to see who is working in similar fields and interconnect. And the last thing, look into, is there a broader agenda? And could you actually be part of this broader agenda? And the broader agenda uh, are probably these days uh, the SDGs and try to be part of that in order to help us all together to bring this global agenda a step further. Thank you.